Dinog was really successful in scaling both the size of the company and its presence around the globe. And that led to a situation where the company's growth was outpacing our ability to scale our architecture. Dinog is one of the world leading visual effects and animation studios. So that means that we put together the visual effects content for feature films, TV series, even reaching out so far as kind of, uh, games development and uh, theme park rides. So we have thousands of artists all over the world. So me and my team, so we develop backend applications. So that support and facilitate each and every part of the you know, creative process that goes into the movie production pipeline. So VFX applications are traditionally desktop oriented, which actually encourages architectures that are really hard to scale. So like for example, you know, each and every artist desktop application would connect to the database directly. You know, uh, so that's one of the bottleneck for us. We got big very quickly, both in the number of artists and the number of developers and the number of places in the world that we're operating out of. Our software delivery performance really started becoming a hindrance. When we knew that we were going to upgrade our systems, um, we knew that it was going to be some form of container solution, um, but we had the uh, need to keep things on-prem. It looked like Red Hat OpenShift was the best fit for our needs. Our pipelines are very important to the way that we work, so it, this has enabled us to essentially improve and iterate on our pipelines so that we can improve for the future in terms of how we deal with larger jobs, larger processes. Currently we have eight separate um, clusters installed and that, that's covering our major offices around the world. In our line of business, a digital asset is one of the fundamental building blocks of a visual effects shot. So even the way that paint on a car responds to light is a digital asset. So moving the backbone of our digital asset management system into Red Hat OpenShift has enabled us to base the pipeline on a new industry standard, USD technology. USD stands for Universal Scene Description. So but the APIs that we had would have posed serious limitations you know, without OpenShift. Initially, we took on a, a Red Hat training package, which had a few subscriptions for key players and a, a few individual courses. Um, that was really very important for us to get up to speed quickly. We also had consultants, a technical architect, and a, a longer period of consultancy with Red Hat. The thing which really struck me was how engaged and embedded the consultants were in our teams. They were always like, a real part of our team, solving our problems on our systems, not just giving us abstract solutions to things. In terms of where we're going in the future with Red Hat, our next steps are to be looking at things such as three-scale API management, which will allow us to better control the use of our resources in the company. Uh, as, as a developer at DNEG, my ambitions are that other developers from day one at DNEG can get up and running with software uh, and projects that they're working on in a frictionless way, and Red Hat are enabling us to do that. Right. We can see we've only just scraped the surface of what's possible, so we can see everything becoming more automated, more efficient and easier to monitor. What I'm excited about over the next few years is to see how Red Hat technologies can help us transform the developer experience at DNEG. We've made a good start already, but there's so, so much more in, in there to be done. <laughs>